state Palestine. I see. Well, it just shows you how corrupt and evil you are, that you succeeded on your own <laughs> brains. No, it just, doesn't it prove that your little college min, uh, mini men were correct? I mean, look how evil you are. You've done well and they haven't. That's right. That's right. They, they... It, it just proves that they're right. Anyone who does well is a threat to these little, these little people. That's correct. These, these, mini, these mini men. They're jealous, small-minded, very, very dangerous people. Hillary Clinton embodies them to the nth degree. And I don't understand one part of this. Well, I do. Why do zillionaires in Hollywood support this kind of socialist fascism? Men who are worth billions, who live on 400-foot yachts, floating around in the Mediterranean, avoiding taxes. Why do these men, who I don't have to name, why do they support a Democrat socialist regime? Well, I'll give you a simple answer. Because when you have centralized power and they have friends in that government, they will not be taxed properly. They can get away with uh, evading taxes. Their industries get favoritism from the government. What do they care about the country itself? See, that's how that works. You see, it explains to you finally why billionaires in Hollywood and elsewhere support the Democrat socialist Islamist machine. At least that's one man's opinion. Well, I have to take a break, but before I do, I must tell you I'm salivating because I'm eating one hour too late today. I normally eat during a show, which is not a good thing. I have the most delicious uh, tuna sandwich. It's not a chopped tuna sandwich with mayonnaise. I ordered something new that I didn't even know they had in a hamburger place. It's a tuna sandwich of a real tuna. I love it. It's like a hippie tuna. Line caught, special this, organic salad that. I can't wait. I'm dying. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation in between giving you lessons on socialism, Marxism, communism, capitalism. <clears throat> Obamaism, uh, global warming fantasies. <laughs> I just ate lunch. It's amazing what radio does. It teaches you to compress time. In a three or four minute, five minute break, wow. It's terrible for my health. And I'm sure it's going to kill me one day, but it hasn't yet. In fact, I'm starting to think the opposite is true. I think that stress is probably better for me than no stress. And competition is better for me than no competition which is why I am not a socialist. I've, I've not always been a winner. There were many, many years that I slogged through the mire of competition and didn't win. I was in the wrong field for getting ahead, and especially since the uh, playing field had been uh, distorted by the socialists, who made certain that minorities with far less uh, brains and uh, qualifications were given what I was supposed to be given. They stole my birthright, so I was in the wrong place at the wrong time for the socialist communist march but as a result they pushed me into a place where i belong which is the most competitive world world for a man of the mind which is radio this is the most competitive field in the world that you can imagine i have to talk about it actually because you don't understand if you're just a listener you know you listen to enjoy it or whatever what are we really doing on radio we're taking our ideas making them as succinct as possible verbally. We have no makeup, no legs, no lipstick, no flashing lights, no $13 million stage sets. I have no writers. So we take our ideas and we present them to you. And if we do a good enough job, you listen. We do a very good job, you listen longer. And then as time goes on, you listen for years. That's how it works. Some of us write books and the books do well. It's the most competitive world for a person who thinks. And why am I telling you this? Because think about this. Who wants to eliminate talk radio? Sidney Blumenthal's moron son, Max. Hillary Clinton is on record wanting to uh, put in the so-called fairness doctrine to make sure that men like me cannot compete. Do you understand why they want us not to compete? Why do people, losers on, on PBS, why would losers on PBS who can't get a real job in the competitive marketplace of real radio. Why the losers on PBS want the Fairness Doctrine? Because then only the government media complex positions will be allowed to be expressed. Now, i got to ask you idiot leftists, as smart as you think you are, 
Do you really want to live in a world where there's only one worldview, one national view? Is that the world you want to live in with no opposition, no thought, no competition in ideas? Because that's what you're going to get if you elect Hillary Clinton. You might get it if you elect a Republican as well. Some of them are very liberal. I can name the Republicans who tried to impose the Fairness Doctrine a few years ago. Trent Lott was one of them. Remember that name? So don't assume that because it has an R next to its name, it's not uh, a part of the same machine it is. Anyway, side note. Side note, what would you like to talk about? I have great callers, many topics. Let's go to the middle of the country, KCMO. Bob on KCMO Radio, welcome to the Savage Nation. Thank you, Dr. Savage, for succinctly and accurately defining socialism, or rather uh, um, fascism. I live in a uh, college town, and I've had this argument for years. Fascism is simply a uh, government power over you. It can be on the left, it can be on the right. I've even taken to carrying around an old dictionary with me, because back in the 50s it was properly defined, but apparently our new dictionaries speak new speak, because they are even beginning to call it. Yes, but let's let's cut to the chase. Who is it on the college campuses who are the new fascists? The professors. Are they all fascistic, or is it all coming from one so-called community? Well, <laughs> that's a, a leading question. I was trying to be nice, but let's say many of them are in the humanities and not in uh, uh, things like mm -hmm. that I study. And aren't many of them in feminist studies? And gender studies? Absolutely. And by the way... Are, aren't some of the worst fascists on American college campuses experts in gender studies and feminist studies? And why is that? Why is, it, why is it that they're experts on gender studies and they have no idea about the damage they're doing to the world, nor do they care? Why? I think part of it is because if you have to tax studies on the end of something it's not really a, a subject do we say history studies do we say no topic? no of course there are no gender studies it's an invented field as are most of the fields in social sciences they're created and invented then they give themselves journals to write in then they put themselves on peer review committees then they give themselves advanced awards and then they get all sorts of grants thank you my friend which is why i said to donald trump yesterday that if he becomes president, I jokingly, not so jokingly, said the only thing I'd like is to be made the head of the NIH. And I said I would straighten out science and medicine research, medical research in America. We'd have real research again instead of politics. And he said, you know what? I like smart people to run things. You talk about corruption. Do you realize how corrupt the CDC is or the NIH or the NSF? Do you realize what this actually means, government-supported medical research and science? How much pure science is really being done? And how much of the so-called science that is funded has to conform to the dictates of the government? All of it. Virtually every scientific study, quote-unquote, has to prove that there's global warming or they will not get a grant. Virtually every poor young PhD scientist or postdoc fellow has to conform to the dictates of the fascists who are running the NIH and the NSF. And that is why there's no real research left in America. Just as business is faltering, so is science, so is medicine. Advances in medical research, how many have there been in America recently? Why? Because it's been crippled by a gigantic socialist, fascistic bureaucracy. Same exact rules apply. When America was free, we had the greatest scientists in the world. When America was totally free, we had the greatest medical scientists in the world. Now you understand the connection? I realize I'm just painting a broad picture. I realize that offends so many people with nuance in America. They like nuance. They like nuance so much, so much they don't realize they've lost everything with their nuance. Sometimes black and white is better than nuance. It makes things clearer for you, and you can really understand what's actually going on. One man's opinion. Very, very blunt. Michael Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is true that Iran lives up to its commitments. It will gain access to roughly $56 billion of its own money, revenue frozen overseas by other countries. But the notion that this will be a game changer, with all this money funneled into Iran's pernicious activities, misses the reality of Iran's current situation, partly because of our sanctions. The Iranian government has over half a trillion dollars in urgent requirements, from funding pensions and salaries oh. to paying for crumbling infrastructure. Oh, Iran's sure. leaders have raised the expectations right, you of get their the people. You can turn it all right. They got the broad, the broad stroke. Yeah, they're going to take the money and they're going to give it in pensions. They're not going to build missiles with it, right? Right. Just like the glaciers are retreating because of man's uh, uh, anthropogenic warming. That's all. He keep it. Keep on the march. The low IQ president. Very mean, very effective, but very, very low IQ. Who uh, doesn't he doesn't know what he's talking about? I guess he's aiming it at thugs in America who really don't know what he's talking about, but just like him, and they figure anything he says is correct. Along the lines of the uh, the the bouncer coming in from uh, the Vatican, again bamboozling millions of people around the world. Global warming. Here is a guy, uh, 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 an ex bouncer. He comes a priest. Now he's the Pope. Now he's an expert on the climate. The only thing the Pope knows about climate is that when it rains, his aides take out umbrellas. But that doesn't stop him from telling us that we're destroying the planet and this and that, all part of the, again, socialist agenda. That's how it fits. Government control. Massive one-world government, one controlling body. One-world religion. Get it? That's how it works. Now, I have more to say about the bouncer from the Vatican when he gets here in that I've never in my life believed I would wake up to see a speech by a pope to the Congress. I thought we had a separation of church and state. I find it so offensive, it's unbelievable. It's not bad enough that we're having a religious figure lecture Congress, but that it's a socialist who is inventing things about the climate and other things that he knows very well is based upon no science whatsoever. It's pure politics. So we have a very political pope, as they were, by the way, hundreds of years ago. You don't understand that. Oh, pope, he has a cross on. He's a holy man. He's descended directly from God. No, he isn't. He's just a man. He's a politician who worked his way up to becoming pope. You think that's not political, to become a pope in the Vatican? You think there's no competition between the bishops, the way the chess game is played? So he was the most clever of all of the bishops. And he became Pope. He maneuvered himself politically to become the Pope. And now he's maneuvering himself to become the king of the world. Rarely says a word about the, the uh, Holocaust against Christians in the Middle East. Hardly ever says a word about Islamofascism. And yet he's going to lecture us now about climate. That's all. Now let's move on. What's in the news? Everything I talked about in the first two hours. The Iran deal... Uh, which is a done deal. The low IQ government got the deal done. They got the deal done. They did what they were told to do by those who control everything, whoever they may be. And now uh, Israel's the big loser. The big loser here is Israel. Now, many of you don't care. You hate Israel. And most, most of you who hate Israel are Jews. I know it's shocking. You just, you just got a shock if you're a liberal Jew that's the equivalent of if you have, let's say, a toothache and you suck air through it. You got a migraine from what I just said. In my experience, the most anti-Israel people I've ever met are Jews, liberal Jews. Go figure. Here's John Kerry, the anti-Semite of all time in my estimation in Clip 6. You're not going to believe this. Listen to this double-talking, backstabbing liar in 6. I take a back seat to no one in my commitment to the security of Israel. Well, you've a been in the back seat your life. I demonstrated through my 28-plus years in the Senate. Ah, come on. And as Secretary of State, I am fully yeah, right. conscious of the existential yeah. nature yeah, yeah, yeah. of the choice Israel must make. I so you gave them the, the choice to Israel, die. Even more than any other country, simply no, cannot afford a mistake in defending its security. Right. But I am also convinced, as is President Obama, that this agreement puts us on the right path to prevent Iran from ever getting a nuclear weapon. Liar. The people of Israel will be safer with this deal. Yeah, this way to the gas chambers. Come in and take a shower. 
Commandant Carey will